Hello, dear friends. It is time for part two of Hope for the Flowers. We're gonna catch the last rays of sun together <clears throat> before the winter sunset and before the winter day. Tomorrow we're supposed to have a lot of snow. So here we go. We left off um, at the end of chapter three and here we are, chapter four. And there's yellow. <clears throat> yellow was desolate without strife. She crawled daily to the pile looking for him and returned home at night sad, but half relieved that she never saw him. If she had, she feared she might plunge after him knowing that she shouldn't. She felt like doing something, anything, rather than this uncertain waiting. What in the world do I really want? She sighed. It seems different every few minutes, but I know there must be more. Finally, she became numb and wandered away from everything familiar. <clears throat> One day, a gray-haired caterpillar hanging upside down on a branch surprised her. He seemed caught in some hairy stuff. You seem in trouble, she said. Can I help? No, my dear, I have to do this to become a butterfly. <clears throat> Her whole insides left. Butterfly, that word, she thought. Tell me, sir, what is a butterfly? It's what you are meant to become. It flies with beautiful wings and joins the earth to heaven. It drinks only nectar from the flowers and carries the seeds of love from one flower to another. Without butterflies, the world would soon have few flowers. It can't be true, gasped Yellow. How can I believe there's a butterfly inside you or me when all I see is a fuzzy worm? How does one become a butterfly? She asked pensively. You must want to fly so much that you are willing to give up being a caterpillar. You mean die? Asked Yellow, remembering the three who fell out of the sky. Yes and no, he answered. What looks like you will die, but but what's really, you will still live. Life is changed, not taken away. Isn't that different from those who die without ever becoming butterflies? <clears throat> and if I decide to become a butterfly, said Yellow hesitantly, what do I do? Watch me. I'm making a cocoon. It looks like I'm hiding, I know, but a cocoon is no escape. It's an, an in-between house where the change takes place. It's a big step since you can never return to caterpillar life. During the change, 
It will seem to you or to anyone who might peek that nothing is happening, but the butterfly is already becoming. It just takes time. And there's something else. Once you are a butterfly, you can really love the kind of love that makes new life. It's better than all the hugging caterpillars can do. Oh, let me go and get Stripe, Yellow said. But she sadly knew he was too far into the pile to possibly reach. Don't be sad, said her new friend. If you change, you can fly and show him how beautiful butterflies are. Maybe he will want to become one too. Yellow was torn in anguish. What if Stripes come, comes back and, and I'm not there? What if he doesn't recognize my new self? S suppose he decides to stay a caterpillar. At least we can do something as caterpillars. We can crawl and eat. We can, we can love in some way. How can two cocoons get together at all? How awful to get stuck in a cocoon. How could she risk the only life she knew when it seemed so unlikely she could ever be a glorious winged creature? What did she have to go on? Seeing another caterpillar who believed enough to make his own cocoon? And that peculiar hope which had kept her off the pillar and leapt within her when she heard about butterflies. The gray-haired caterpillar continued to cover himself with silky threads. As he wove the last bit around his head, he called, You'll be a beautiful butterfly. We're all waiting for you. And Yellow decided to risk for a butterfly. For courage, she hung right beside the other cocoon and began to spin her own. Imagine, I, I didn't even know I could do this. That's some encouragement that, that I'm on the right track. If I have inside me the stuff to make cocoons, maybe the stuff of butterflies is there too. Chapter five. Stripe made much faster progress this time. He was bigger and stronger since he had taken time out. From the beginning, he determined to get to the top. He especially avoided meeting the eyes of other crawlers. He knew how fatal such contact could be. He tried not to think of yellow. He disciplined himself neither to feel nor to be distracted. Stripe didn't seem just disciplined to others. He seemed ruthless. Even among climbers, he was special. He didn't think he was against anybody. He was just doing what he had to do if he was to get to the top. Don't blame me if you don't succeed. It's a tough life. Just make up your mind, he would have said had any caterpillar complained. Then one day, he was near his goal. Stripe had done well. 
But when light finally filtered down from the top, it was close to exhaustion. At this height, there was almost no movement. All held their positions with every skill a lifetime of climbing had taught them. Every small move counted terribly. There was no communication, only the outsides touched. They were like cocoons to one another. Then one day, Stripe heard a crawler above him saying, none of us can get any higher without getting rid of them. Soon after, he felt tremendous pressure and shaking. Then came screams and falling bodies. Then silence, lots more light and less weight from above. Stripe felt awful with this new knowledge. The mystery of the pillar was clearing. He now knew what had happened to the three caterpillars. He now knew what must always happen on the pillar. Frustration surged through Stripe, but as he was agreeing this was the only way up, he heard a tiny whisper from the top. There's nothing there at all. It was answered by another. Quiet fool, they'll hear you down the pillar. We're where they want to get. That's what's here. Stripe felt frozen. To be so high and not high at all, it only looked good from the bottom. The whisper came again. Look over there, another pillar. And they're there too, everywhere. Stripe became angry as well as frustrated. My pillar, he moaned, only one of thousands, millions of caterpillars climbing nowhere. Something is really wrong. But what else is there? His life with yellow seemed so far away. That wasn't it either, not, not quite. Yellow, he let her image fill his being. You knew something, didn't you? Was it courage to wait? Maybe she was right. I wish I was with her. I could go down, he thought. I, I'd look ridiculous, but maybe it's better than what's happening here. But Stripe's thought was interrupted by bursts of movement all over his level. Each seemed to be making a last effort to find some entry to the top, but with every push, the top layer tightened. Finally, one caterpillar gasped. Unless we try together, nobody will reach the top. Maybe if we give one big push, they can't hold us down forever. But before they could act, there were cries and commotion of another kind. Stripe struggled to, to the edge to see the cause. A brilliant yellow winged creature was circling the pillar, moving freely, a wonderful sight. How did it get so high without climbing?
When Stripe poked out his head, the creature seemed to recognize him. It extended its legs and tried to grab him. Stripe caught himself just before being pulled out of the pile. The brilliant creature let go and looked sadly into his eyes. That look activated excitement Stripe hadn't felt since he first saw the pillar. Words from the past returned. Butterflies alone. Is this a butterfly? And what did it mean? The top, they'll see. It was all so strange and yet like it was supposed to be and, and those eyes with the look of yellow. Could it be? Such impossible thoughts. Yet the excitement inside wouldn't stop. He grew happy. Somehow he could escape. He could be carried away. But as this possibility became real, something else grew inside. He felt he shouldn't escape like this. Looking into the creature's eyes, he could hardly bear the love he saw there. He felt unworthy. He wanted to change to make up for all the times he had refused to look at the other. He tried to tell her what he felt. He stopped struggling. The others stared at him as though he were mad. Hmm. Chapter six. He turned around and began down the pillar. This time he didn't curl up. He stretched out full length and looked straight into the eyes of each caterpillar. He marveled at the variety and beauty, amazed that he had never noticed before. He whispered to each, I've been up. There's nothing there. Most paid no attention. They were too intent on climbing. One said, it's sour grapes. He's bitter. I bet her he never made it to the top. But some were shocked and even stopped climbing to hear him better. One of these whispered in anguish, don't say it even if it's true. What else can we do? Stripe's anger shocked them all, including himself. We can fly. We can become butterflies. There's nothing at the top and it doesn't matter. As he heard his own message, he realized how he had misread the instinct to get high. To get to the top, he must fly, not climb. Stripe looked at each caterpillar, inebriated with joy that there could be a butterfly inside. But the reaction was worse than before. He saw fear in eyes. They didn't stop to listen or speak. This happy, glorious news was much too much to take, too good to be true. And if it wasn't true, the hope that lit up the pillar dimmed. All seemed confused and unreal the way down was immensely long. The vision of the butterfly faded. Doubt flooded Stripe. The pile took on horrible dimensions. He struggled on barely, blindly. He seemed wrong to give up believing, yet believing seemed impossible. A crawler sneered. How could you swallow such a story? 
Our life is earth and climbing. Look at us worms. We can be butterflies inside, make the best of it and enjoy caterpillar living. Perhaps he's right, sighed Stripe. I haven't any proof. Did I only make it up because I needed it so much? And in pain, he continued down, searching for those eyes which would let him whisper, I saw a butterfly and there can be more to life. One day, finally, he was down. Chapter seven, tired and sad, Stripe crawled off to the old place where Yellow and he had romped. She was not there and he was too exhausted to go further. He curled up and fell asleep. When he finally awoke, he found the yellow creature fanning him with wings of light. Is this a dream, he wondered? But the dream creature acted awfully real. She stroked him with her feelers and, and most of all looked at him so lovingly that he began to trust that what he had said about becoming a butterfly might be true. She walked a little distance away, then flew back. She repeated it as if he should follow. So he did. They came to a branch from which hung two torn sacks. The creature kept on inserting her head, then her tail, into one of them. Then she would fly to him and touch him. Her feelers quivered and Stripe knew she was speaking. He couldn't make out the words. Then slowly, he seemed to understand Somehow, he knew what to do. Stripe climbed again. It got darker and darker and he was afraid. He felt he had to let go of everything. And Yellow waited. Until one day, The end. Or the beginning.